What's up guys, Lifting Nerd Bro here. In this video, I am going to present to you 13 items you might want to change orb in hopes of hitting the jackpot. These items are either worth a lot or very useful, and in lots of cases, both. Besides these 13 items, there are of course lots of other great items that are worth chain sorbing. However, these are the top tier ones and in my opinion, the best ones to use or waste a chain sorb on. In the video, I am also going to show you a rough estimate of the price you can expect for these items. Things such as sockets, links and rolls are not taken into consideration and that is why you are going to see some very varying prices sometimes. Additionally, I will for each item tell you what zone level that is required for you to find the base item type in. As for the prices, please remember that these will change over time. And now, let's get into the video. Everyone likes a new weapon, so let's start with those. For the first item, you want an Imperial Bow, a Chain Sorb, and if you're lucky, you'll get yourself the awesome Wind Ripper. The main thing that makes Wind Ripper incredibly powerful is its high local crit chains of either 9 or 10% depending on the roll, and this of course stacks really well with any build that picks up chains to crit nodes in the skill tree. The Imperial Bow base type item can be found in any zone above level 64. The next weapon requires a spine bow as base type weapon. Changing this item will give you the chance of getting yourself a Voltaxic Rift. Voltaxic Rift has the unique ability to convert lightning damage into chaos damage and making that chaos damage able to shock as well. Voltaxic Rift is actually a map drop only, however the spine bow base type item can be found in any zone above level 62 and it can be changed from that item straight away. Now enough with the bows, let's bring in the manly gavel. Changing this item will give you the opportunity of Odin blessing you with his son's awesome hammer, Mjolnir. The very unique affix of Mjolnir is that it has 50% chance to cast socketed lightning spells on hit, and this of course opens up for some very interesting and very powerful builds. The gavel base item type can be found in any zone above level 58. The next weapon requires a Prophecy Wand. Using a Chain Sorb on this item might grant you, if you're lucky, the Wand Void Battery. While Void Battery will reduce your spell damage by 80%, it has the unique affixes of granting you 1 additional maximum power charge and 25% increased spell damage per power charge. That can of course result in a lot of extra spell damage if you have a build that focuses on getting all the power charges in the skill tree. Void Battery is just as Voltaxic Rift and Map Drop only, but the Prophecy Wand base type item can be found in any zone above level 66 and can be changed from that straight away. The next item is one of the most popular and most after assault weapons in the game. It requires a Siege Axe and if luck is with you, Chain Sorbing this will grant you the awesome Soul Taker. The very unique thing that makes Soul Taker so very valuable is the affix insufficient mana doesn't prevent your melee attacks. And a lot of Cyclone users appreciate this as Cyclone can be very mana hungry and this of course benefits other skills besides Cyclone. The Siege Axe base type item can be found in any zone above level 57. Now it wouldn't feel right if I weren't to mention at least one dagger or knife. And more specifically, here we're talking about the slaughter knife. If you chainsaw this item and are really lucky, then it is time to clap your hands as you now own a Beano's kitchen knife. The unique thing about this dagger is its ability to poison nearby enemies when killing an already poisoned enemy. Additionally, doing this will also make nearby allies regenerate life. It also grants a nice 30% increased damage over time and some nice critical damage buffs as well. The Slaughter Knife base type item can be found in any zone above level 56. Now the last weapon we're going to take a look at was introduced in the Forsaken Masters expansion. It requires a Judgment Staff and if you decide to use a Chain Sorb on this base item you might find yourself with the pretty badass Hegemony's Era in your inventory. Hegemony's Era does not only have very high physical damage, increased attack speed, increased critical strike chains, it also adds one to your maximum power charges and the unique affix of gaining a power charge on knockback with melee damage. 
This staff pretty much has it all. The Judgment Staff base type item can be found in any zone above level 66. Now let's take a look at some of the top tier chest armors that can be chainsorbed. The first of these items require an occultist's vestment. Chainsorbing this base item might possibly award you with one of the absolute most powerful chest armors, Chevron's wrappings. This item does not only have a lot of energy shield, but it also gives you the affix Chaos Damage does not bypass energy shield. Because of this, Chevron's wrappings is one of those items that makes having a low life build very viable. The Occultist's Vestment base type item can be found in any zone above level 60. The next and last chest armor we are going to talk about requires a Glorious Plate base item type. By using a Chainsorp on this item, you have the chance of earning yourself a pretty sweet Kerem's Heart. Kerem's Heart grants a whopping 500 plus to maximum life and up till 40% increased fire damage. And it's pretty obvious that any Righteous Fire build will love this breastplate. The Glorious Plate base type item can be found in any zone above level 66. Please note that the average price showed in the corner is for the non-legacy version of this item. The legacy version is a lot more expensive. The next item is a helmet, and even though it just got nerfed, it is still very powerful. It requires a hubris circlet, and chainsorbing this item will give you the opportunity of getting yourself the Wicked Crown of Ice helmet. The thing that makes Crown of Ice so powerful is its unique affix increases and reductions to spell damage also applies to attacks. The Hubris Circlet base type item can be found in any zone above level 67. And please note that the picture you see here is the item before it was nerfed. Now I mentioned two bows in the beginning of the video, but what is a bow without a quiver? One of the best quivers in the game requires a simple penetrating arrow quiver as base item. Using a chance orb on this item gives you the chance of getting a drill neck. The thing that makes drill neck really powerful is its unique affix projectile damage increased by arrow pierce chains. And that basically means that any pierce focused build can end up getting themselves a lot of extra damage with this quiver. The added 350 evasion is not bad either. The penetrating arrow quiver base type item can be found in any zone above level 34. And now girls, let's talk jewelry. More specifically, a ring, and even more specifically, an amethyst ring. Chainsorping one of these might end up granting you the awesome Ming's heart. The unique property and the thing that makes Ming's heart worth a lot is of course not that it will reduce our maximum life and energy shield, but instead it is the affix that gives us a 20% of our total physical damage as extra chaos damage. And it says itself that for any physical damage build, this ring will end up awarding a lot of extra damage to your build. The Amethyst ring base type item can be found in any zone above level 28. And now for the last item I'm going to show you in this video. And while Ming's heart might look good on your fingers, we need some bling for our waist as well. For that we need a belt, and not just any belt, a chain belt. By changing this you might find the awesome auction suddenly in your inventory just waiting for you to show it off. The thing that makes auction show off worthy is its ability to gain 1% physical damage leached as mana per power charge and that freeze and chill duration is based on 65% of energy shield instead of life. Additionally it grants a good amount of energy shield. The weapon elemental damage is not bad either. The chain belt base item type can be found right from when you start out the game at level 1, so if you are a gambler by heart, well, there you have it, you can start right now. Well, there you have it guys, 13 top tier items worth chain sorbing every now and then when you find them. Other items that are worth mentioning is the bringer of rain helmet and the Antvarius gold ring. However, since this video is already getting long enough, we're going to leave them out for now. Please remember that chain sorbing is a gamble. And in some cases, it might be better to trade your chain orbs for chaos orbs instead and play it safe. Anyway, thank you for watching, and bros, do you even nerd?